Paddle boxing fans right now, I'm just going to do my prediction for Kell Brook versus Hector David Saldiva. Uh, this is the prediction. Like I said, Kell Brook, 28 wins undefeated, 18 of those wins by way of knockout. Um, Hector David Saldivia, 141, 32 of those wins by way of knockout to two defeats, both by way of knockout, 43 fight career. Uh, Brook was in his last toughest fight of his career last time out. He came through it and he got the win. It was close, but he got it. Saldivia stumbled at the top of fringe contender level before, and this is a crossroads fight for both boxers, really. Realistically, we're looking at two fringe contenders entering the ring and one world level contender leaving the ring. Uh, straight into the advantages, who's got the power? We're looking at Saldivia. And by the way, if I'm not saying his name right, don't take it personally. I'm not Spanish, I'm not from Argentina. I don't know exactly how you say his name. I'm just guessing, really. If I'm saying his name right, it's a good guess. Yeah, anyway, he's got a 75% KO ratio, mostly against domestic level opponents. Um, can he do it at world level? I don't know. In the biggest fight of his career, once again, I don't know. However, 28 of his knockouts have come in the first six rounds. So he, he's very powerful early on, but... Evidence suggests he doesn't carry his knockout power later. You know, one another thing to consider is Kel Brook. Does he have power? Yes, he does, but not as much. He can bang, you know, 65% KO ratio for Kel Brook, mostly all at domestic level too, but five of his last eight were KOs, and they would all fringe contender level opponents, which suggests he does have some pop in his punches at world level. Looking at the speed and... I've got to give that to Kel Brook, you know, he's a very quick boxer, good hand speed, not exceptional, good foot speed, but not exceptional. Once again, his best attribute is the way he can set around his footwork, his footwork, his hands, his, change his hands, uh, change his stance, that's his best thing, making himself very awkward, but not, doing nothing special, if you understand, like his name suggests. Looking at the movement, and I give that once again to Kel Brook, he's got very good movement, you know, his foot speed's good but not exceptional, like I said before. He's got the ability to switch his boxing stances through his foot movement when he needs to, which is a very good thing that he can do. It makes him very awkward in terms of beat, to work out. He can always switch a tactical surprise on you, where there's a lot of guys, in fact, I don't think Saldivia will be making any tactical surprises in this fight. The only person who's going to do anything tactically different is probably going to be Kel Brook. Um, like I said, he's I think he's better defensively than he is offensively in terms of his movements. Um, he doesn't have that killer instinct that Prince Nazim had, obviously. Uh, but one thing he does very well defensively that not people, not many people pick up on is he's always moving it in the opposite direction to the shots coming in, so that he never gets hit totally clean, right? And this worked very well against Carson Jones until the final round, where he took clean punches to the head in the twelfth round. Mostly, he was getting hit to the body by Jones. That was bringing his arms down. The only issue was he was still never getting hit clean against Jones, if you look at the fight, until the 12th round. But he came through it. He didn't get stopped. He's still undefeated. And that's what we've got to say about the movement of Brook. When we look at the opponent, his opponent's a lot more flat-footed. You know, he can cut the ring down uh, fairly well, but his movement's not brilliant, you know. He's got better, but once, once again, it's not brilliant. And that's something that Brook will be looking to take advantage of. Saldivia can take an uh, encouragement, by the way, from the fact that Carson Jones got a good bit of work done to the body. Maybe Kel Brook will have had to have done some work on how he's going to defend himself to the body, especially in a fight against a guy who's a big puncher who's going to try and take his hands down from his head and work the body. Look at the boxing ability, and I give this one to Kel Brook. You know, he's a much better boxer than his opponent and his greatest attribute is that he can make himself the most awkward boxer at 147 pounds now don't get this twisted i'm not saying he's the best boxer at 147 pounds and i'm not saying he's the most dangerous fighter at 147 pounds i'm saying he can make himself awkward right you see his ability to switch from orthodox to southpaw at his own will is what makes him very awkward and therefore dangerous do you understand where I'm, where I'm coming from? You see, if you're trying to work out an orthodox boxer, that's what you can do. You can that's what that's your aim. Now he can switch his his whole stance to southpaw. So now you've got to 
with getting something else that maybe you don't like doing. Maybe if you're trying to take away the southpaw stance from Kell Brook, he's happy to go orthodox and therefore pop you with a different jab, different type of jab, different type of shot. You see, he's very awkward in the way you can do this, and this is one of the ways that he racks up points in close matches by landing a few cleaner shots through his awkward stance. And this is probably what happened in the um, Carson Jones fight, where he controlled the first six rounds, no doubt, but then the second six rounds were more Carson Jones. The main difference were one or two rounds where Carson Jones tried to take a round off. Or the fact that maybe he was more awkward in terms of talking about Kel Brook now. He was more awkward in the way that he switched. I remember one round he switched to a southpaw stance and then he landed a great one, two shot straight down the pipe, down the middle and it got a good rally from the crowd. It just made it look like Kel Brook was rallying in this round and that was probably the difference between the win and the loss or maybe the win and the draw in this whole fight really. So that's one thing that Kel Brook's going to have to look to do in this fight. He's going to be very awkward. But another thing is that the Carson Jones fight was probably one of the best things that could have happened to him. You know, sometimes people take a beating, they get knocked out, and then they come back from it. Sometimes better, sometimes worse. Kel Brook didn't take a knockout. You know, he got he took a beating, but now he can he knows. Look, I'm not made out of titanium. I know what I've got to do to win. I've got to do better than I was before. I mean, he's already made some changes in his team to make himself better. So for that put that point forward, you know, let's see if he can come back stronger from the scare that Carson Jones gave him. So I'm going to get straight into my prediction now. And I think that Kel Brook will win this fight. The question is, will the new improved Brook win this fight by knockout or a unanimous decision? And I think Saldivia is a better opponent than Jones. But one thing that you must realise is Saldivia is being stopped in one round by a guy that Carson Jones beat. Okay? So he might have a suspect chain himself at the top level. So for that reason, I'm actually going to go with a knockout for Kel Brook between rounds 7 and 10. 